This is Carissa Caramanis O'Brien with EMSExpoLive.com. We're here taking a look at the X collar, and we're here with Martine, and he's going to show us a little bit more about this really fascinating product. Yes, thank you so much. Well, what I'm going to introduce you is to an uh, inno innovative uh, cervical splinting system, and it comes in this very compact configuration and includes also an occipital, adjustable occipital support uh, for a head restraining system. If you observe this mannequin, what you find is that this mannequin has a substantial amount of rotation. So, um, as, a, as a splint, the, the device that I'm going to show you, the x collar I have to get it out of the bag, what it does is secures the patient above C1 in the occipital region, let me show you with him, and below C7 between the shoulder blades. That be posterior and anterior, we're going to splint the patient by supporting the the facial features and the upper sternum. But we don't want to guess the sizes, we're going to customize it to the patient, exactly to the needs of the patient, and to the body type, and in this case, to even the position of the patient. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Okay, the main, uh, the main technique is to oppose my own forces, that way I don't manipulate the patient, and you can see this mannequin is not secure to the, to the board. What I do is I push and pull, and I maintain the, the patient's position. I do the circumference and the length. Now, if you observe in the upper sternum, because he's rotated, it is a gap that we avoid that we need to fill. But we can accommodate to fill the gap by rotating, by extending asymmetrically. So we adjusted wow. asymmetrically the circumference and the length. Now, to in splint, properly splint the patient, what we're going to do is, we're going to integrate the posterior and anterior pieces by attaching these straps. Again, push and pull to avoid manipulation. Wow. And they, now you're done it's splinting the cervical spine in the position of comfort. That is really fascinating. Uh, it's, Thank you. It's, I mean, it's really innovative that you have obviously provided for really great immobilization here. But I love how you've also taken patient comfort into, into consideration as well. The, the design is very ergonomic. If you can see, it's designed around the ears so it doesn't infringe or push pressure on the ears, on the earlobes, so uh, in patients wearing jewelry, earrings, and whatnot. I just find this really fascinating because the head is not even in line. I mean, I was always taught, you know, you crank on the head, and you put them in line, and you, and you set it up. This is neat because he is splinted in the position that you found him. Exactly. And, and in the case that um, the, as most protocols, national protocols, state that if a patient complains of any pain, you should not move the head. Right. And you should keep it like it is. Very nice. You know? And in my mind, I think one of the important things is if you find a patient that is unconscious, or you just came out of a car accident or, or, or a fall, you know, I don't, he cannot complain, but, you know, it'd be better if you have a tool that can accommodate to whatever position you found in. Very nice. I love, this is really amazing. Thank Very you. amazing. Thank you. Well, let me demonstrate how, uh, when we uh, complete the procedure of splinting or uh, immobilizing to transport the patient with the backboard, we're going to lay the patient down. And this very compact system right here, this little tiny foam pad is, is a whole system. What we're going to do is, and this, this is the first ever, so far, adjustable height uh, occipital support. When we have patients, depending on the physique of the patient or age, you have different gaps in the occipital region. Wow. A child, yeah. for example, we know that maybe we need to pad under the shoulder blades instead of you know, putting so much support under the head. So you may need only one thickness for a child. But as um, you know, different patients may have different needs. You know, all the older patients may need more support. So we can add and build to it until we get the support that the amount of support that we need. So we have three different options. It's all integrated, and then we f we pull this, and they, they stick to each other and stick to the board. Very nice. So this will pr will will provide per se with a proper amount of of signal support, but we still need to provide for immobilization, for vibration, you know, the, the, the ambulance, the rig is going in route to the um, uh, ED, you know, and uh, we, you don't want vibrations on jumps and why not. Right. So 
instead of using both these health locks or, or uh, head restraints, these straps do the work integrating to this collar. You just release and reattach and go around the board. Oh, wow. Huh. This, this system, with, because it's a straps and it's flexible foam pads, can be integrated with stokes baskets, um, any type of uh, back support or backboards that you're using, any models right now. And then you do the other side. There. Reattach the strap and go around the board. In this case, because that patient was this patient was immobilized in the position of comfort, we have a rotation. I'm trying not to block the camera. Okay. We have a rotation, so the distance in that side is less than the distance in this side. So what we need to do is just take another rub. Ah, smart. Okay. So now we're providing for good immobilization wow. for any vibration, uh, up and down or lateral. But additionally, and a, and a, and a shortfall of conventional uh, head restraining system is that they really secure the head to the board. But the body sometimes is not that secure to the board. So with the movement on the ambulance or even getting the patient into the ambulance, depending on the conditions, the, the body may shift a little bit. So for movement up and down on the board, sliding the board, this system allows to do that right. to a degree. But even though it maintains good immobilization up and down or lateral. So, and because yeah. this is so integrated into the patient, you really don't need, is it, that's why you don't need these, remember the bulky side blocks and everything? Is no, that because this thing is so amazingly tight and, it, and you're actually integrating a back support in with it, is that right? Exactly. Oh, very exactly. cool. That's and and the, you also think about the savings on the space, you know, and the next thing is designed more for uh, units like search and rescue or confined space or, or tactical units, military or police, where they have maybe just smaller bags. That makes them, they smaller for EMS, you have head restraint system and collar all in one. That's amazing. Yeah, I think that alone is a huge benefit to save that kind of space. And I also love all that adjustment that you made. I mean, you you detached, you reattached, but yet it allowed for minimal patient movement. Exactly, exactly. And think about also the the force multiplier factor. If I'm by myself and I show up, or, or me and my partner show up to the scene of an accident, and we have multiple patients, maybe the family in one vehicle, another couple in another vehicle. You see, instead of me committing to maintain ceasefire, I can do my triage and I can start immobilization by putting the device in the patients that I deem pertinent in about 30 seconds. Wow. So until more resources show up, backboards show up, and an ambulance to do the transport. It's brand new. Um, uh, right now we have about 19 distributors worldwide in approximately 29 countries. Oh, very amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for showing us this really innovative product. We appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. You've just seen the X collar, the latest and greatest in C spine immobilization. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Montero. We have more cool videos coming up on emsexpo.net.